The podcast for the inquisitive diver. Hey there, dive buddies, and welcome to the show. Well, it looks like the world is opening up again at long last, so we can get on our planes and get some diving done. So, joining me today's episode is the lovely lady from Dive Planet, Deborah Dixon Smith, who is going to help me run through what's going on around the world and where we can start planning to dive. Debs. Welcome to the show, lady. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. I'm very excited about the border being open very, very soon. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Where's, your, where's the first place you're going to hit? Uh, the first place I'm going to hit is probably Fiji. Um, I'm just really, really missing tropical diving. And mm. um, Fiji is one of my favorite places to dive. The The soft coral there is just absolutely beautiful. And... Um, yeah, I just can't wait to get back out there. <laughs> I, think, I think it's fair to uh, point out that you're a Sydney, you're based in Sydney as well, aren't you? I'm based in Sydney, yes. So we've been locked down for some time, but we had some very exciting news today in that um, they're scrapping quarantine um, completely next month. So we, New South Wales will be welcoming international visitors, which is Holy very cow. exciting. I've not seen that. No, just announced. Uh, so no. when, okay, when, when's that starting then? Is it for, what, first of next month? I think it's the first of next month, yeah. Happy days. Does that mean we can actually get on a plane and go somewhere then? Yeah, because we won't have to quarantine when we come back. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, to be honest, I mean, we've got to point out the majority of what we're going to talk about now is for people who've got the double vaccine. Uh, most countries are yeah. demanding it. Yeah, yeah I think um, the thing... The advantage that we've had here in New South Wales is that um, we're ahead of target. We're, we've already hit 80% double vaxxed. And um, so that's why um, things are opening up early. Um, what Before you, you go booking something immediately, though, um, I don't think the airlines have caught up yet. So it might be a while before, you know, um, there's enough flights, there's enough affordable flights, um, mm. but all of those things are in motion at the moment, so it all should start happening very soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, just to just back it up a little bit and, and let people know that are listening in, the reason I've invited Debs on the show is because um, she has a rather good um, business, which is a, uh, a travel agency that focuses on the uh, scuba industry. Um and obviously, I've had a little bit of a background in it with my company that's got a curtain over it at the moment because of COVID. But um, Debs is well ahead of the game, <laughs> so we're looking at uh, looking at Debs for all of her advice and experience. Dive Planet was started in 2012. It's a business that has kind of morphed in a few ways. We first started it um, as a blog, and out of a uh, a joy for diving and for wanting to share the underwater world um, with as many people as we could, both to inspire them to become ocean advocates and to get out there and learn how to dive and start exploring these, you know, amazing destinations that here in Australia are so close close by. Um, from a blog, it morphed into an app and then it morphed into more of a content marketing agency. Um, I have a back at brown, background in media, so I have relationships with quite a few of the tourism organisations around this part of the world. So for a while we were putting together content marketing packages and consulting to the likes of Tourism Solomons and Tourism Fiji on how to promote to the, uh, the dive market. Um, and then in 2018, the opportunity came along to purchase a dive travel agency called Diversion Dive Travel. And we figured that because we amassed quite a large um, number of subscribers and followers, um, that this would be the next logical step to start putting um, a dive package at the end of all this content that we'd been creating for um, six years. So yeah. that's how it came about. Um, obviously, uh, since 2012 and before then as well, before we started Dive Planet, um, Simon, my partner and I, had done a lot of diving around the world, specifically Southeast Asia and the South Pacific are our 
areas of expertise. And so um, it's been great fun um, putting together dive packages for clients since 2018, um, having experienced most of these destinations ourselves. Um, we can, you know, tell our customers firsthand, um, you know, where the best places to go are according to what they want to see. You know, if you're a macro lover, we can tell you um, the best resorts to go to. If you want to see big stuff, we can recommend the best liverboards and the best destinations for that. Um, yeah. If you're a beginner, you know, we can suggest places that are easy diving um, and better for beginners. And if you want to challenge, you know, same thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a great business model. I mean, I, I was the same with Nomadic Scuba and still am. You know, it's um, my, when I first set out on it, I spent a considerable amount of money just traveling around and visiting the locations for that very reason. If I'm going to sell something, then I want to be able to experience it and use that experience to be able to pass it on to those that do want to experience it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And the other, the other passion of ours, of course, is the ocean advocacy and marine conservation. So um, the other thing that we've been looking for in our travels is those resorts and liverboards that operate more sustainably. Um, yeah. And um, pretty much I would say all of the resorts um, that we promote um, have some kind of um, community outreach or marine conservation program that they support or manage themselves. Um, mm. I mean, most people that work in the dive industry care passionately about the marine environment, so that it's hardly surprising. But still, it's it's nice to be able to assure our customers that you know they're booking with a sustainable um, company. Yeah, yeah, that's it, and. Um... I suppose the bookings are going to start coming through like when the floodgates open. Oh, I hope um, so. Actually, it is starting to get busy <laughs> this week. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's been lots of questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I've had a few, but uh, like I say, I'm, I'm leaving the curtain down on mine for now. Um, I'm just going to wait it out a little bit longer. Um, but anyway, speaking of uh, diving down this part of the world, um, and you touched on Fiji, Um why don't you give me some idea of what it's like in Fiji, a place I've never dived before? Well, you're missing out. You've had to add it to your list, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, Fiji is a good place to start because they have just made the announcement that they will opening uh, to international visitors in December. Um, they've hit their vaccination targets there to enable them to do that. And um, I've been following their progress over the past 12 months or so, and they've been working very hard, um, not only in that vaccination program, but also to educate their entire hospitality um, uh, industry on how to practice safely, um, you know, in COVID times. So mm -hmm. they've got an accreditation system in place and um, most most of the operators have now, um, you know, passed that with flying colours. So you, mm. you can be assured when you go to Fiji um, that you'll be safely looked after. Um, yeah. The diving in Fiji is is diverse and it everything from, you know, macro through to um, very, very pretty um, soft coral reefs like the Rainbow Reef, in Taviuni and um, Blywater uh, to, you know, adrenaline diving like the Bengal Lagoon shark dives. And um, oh, that's, what, that's where they do the, the tiger sharks, isn't it? Tiger sharks, bull sharks, lemon sharks, uh, reef sharks. Um, you usually get, you know, quite a few varieties there. It's very exciting. Um, yeah. uh, but for a different kind of pelagic diving experience in Fiji, the island of Kandavu in the south um, east um, is famous for it, the, at the great Astrolobe Reef. Now, the Astrolobe Reef is um, I think it's something like the third longest barrier reef in the world, um, but really? it's enormous and it's very close to shore. Um, unlike yeah. our Great Barrier Reef. But 
it's close to shore and it drops down about a thousand meters. So you get a lot of pelagic action there. They have seen, they, you know, experienced both reef and oceanic mantas there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, plenty of sharks and in the winter months, um, humpback whales as well. So everything from that kind of big pelagic action to um, what Fiji's more famous for is, you know, the rainbow reef and all of the colours that you'll see there and in the Namina Reserve as well. Okay. And what, what island was that again, sorry, the one with the reef? Kandavu. So in Fiji there are silent, there are, they're not silent ends. There are invisible ends. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so it's spelt K A D A V U. But just got it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm just having a look at the map now to see where it sits. Yeah, so I think same as Nandi, um, which mm -hmm. has the invisible N as well. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so um, how do you actually? What's what's the common route to get into Fiji from the rest of the world? Uh, Nandi. So the capital, there are two international airports, but the most, um, certainly at the moment, uh, mm. the, there are more flights into Nandi. And from Nandi, um, there are obviously places on the, the main island, um, such as Raki Raki in the north, which has access to Bly Water, or um, Beng Lagoon in the south, where the shark diving is. Um, Benga Lagoon also has some beautiful, beautiful soft coral reefs as well. Um, but also from the Nandi, you can then fly out to um, Savu Savu and to Taviuni in the north. Oh, yeah. um, and, or you can jump on a liverboard um, yeah. a little bit north of Nandi and La Toka. So, who's, who's running liverboards out there then? Is it quite a few? Or? No, there's only one. Um, well, really? so, sorry, there are two. There is one dedicated liverboards, and, and that's the Naya. Um, okay. The Naya runs out of Latoka, and that specialises in the areas that are difficult to reach from a resort such as the Marina Namina Marine mm. Reserve. Um, mm. The other option, which is sort of a liverboard, is um, Captain Crook Cruises Fiji. Now, that's more of a small ship cruising company, but they do have a fully operational dive shop. They've got a dedicated dive tender, and they can take, uh, I think, around 20, 25 divers on a cruise. There are two scheduled dives a day, mm -hmm. and they visit some fantastic uh, reefs such as the Rainbow Reef, for example, um, and they've got a selection of about seven, six or seven itineraries. Okay. What's the? Um, I'm going to ask you a gazillion questions because I've not been here yet. But what's? Is there a, a, a best time of year to visit? Is there a rainy season, dry season, hot, cold? Um, it's you could you could dive it year round. Um, there is a rainy season, um, which is sort of January to March it doesn't really get hugely affected by that. In fact, January can be one of the best times to visit for those glass out days. Um, you know, you've just got to take a chance on um, there not being a cyclone, <laughs> which is <laughs> because that cyclone season as well, but it very, very rarely happens. Yeah. So yeah. Um, That would be a bit of a bugger, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but even then, you know, even after heavy rains, the the, the water becomes clear so quickly. So yeah. um, really any time of year. It does get cold in July. Um, okay. So it's, it's, you know, it's wetsuit season, whereas, mm. you know, onwards of about September, October, it starts to get to where you only really need to wear like a rashy and or a shark skin. That's about all you'd need. Happy days. Shark skin. Love me shark skin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool beans. Well, that's that's Fiji. And you say they're opening up in December, was it? They are. And they have already, I've seen uh, quite cheap flights. Jetstar were promoting $169 flights to Nandi. Um, what, and 10000 to come back? 
<laughs> Very possibly. But but no, it, um, hopefully, you know, the, the ball's in motion. Fiji Airs, Airways, I had a look at the pricing there because, as I say, I'm planning on going. And yeah. <laughs> I've got and, the feeling that you're going to be out the door as quick as you can. <laughs> yeah, and they weren't too expensive, you know, around five $600 return. So, okay. um, yeah, it looks like the airlines are coming board fairly quickly. Um, there's some confidence there, so that's fantastic. Happy days. Okay, where are we going to next? I've got me, I've got one eye on the map here. And um, what, about, what about Vanuatu? Vanuatu, I love Vanuatu. There's no official word on when Vanuatu will reopen. However, you know, like many of the Pacific Islands, they've had a very, very low um, incidence. Um, of COVID, so um, but at the same time their vaccination rate is quite slow. Um, but maybe now that Fiji is opening up, the you know the other Pacific nations will start to pick up the game a bit more. Um, Vanuatu, like most Pacific islands, rely heavily on tourism, so yeah. I really hope to see them opening up very very soon. Um, Vanuatu is another. Um, you know, very diverse diving destination. Um, it's known, of course, mainly for the Coolidge, which is the largest, most accessible World War II wreck mm. in the world. And it is quite amazing. It's um, over 100 metres long. And, you, I mean, divers have spent an entire week just diving the Coolidge. There's so many dive sites on it, um, it can get very deep. But it's it's fascinating. Uh, Luganville, which is the name of the town in Espiritu Santo, mm -hmm. um, which is the largest island in Vanuatu, um, was the second largest naval base in the Pacific behind Hawaii. So there is... Okay wreckage everywhere above and below water so there's um lots of wrecks and you know jeeps and guns and all sorts of things in the jungle <laughs> that the jungle's yeah. taken over there's a number of little world war ii museums on land as well um and you can just be walking through the rainforest and stumble across world war ii um wreckage basically mm. you know things like mess tins and yeah. well spe speaking of old wreckage uh, i managed to um i did a trip what is it now december 2019 just before the pandemic and it was on um uh, Shazzy's boat side oh, yeah. uh, the solomon's boat they were coming up in the papua new guinea and the captain for the trip was kevin green who lives in vanuatu mm -hmm. and has been there for so long he's he, he matches the world war ii records <laughs> that's lying around um but every time i start thinking about vanuatu i think about um after that trip when i met him it was a few months later i think it must have been windy season or something but a cyclone or something had come through oh. and he posted a video online and it was just a handheld camera walking through from the front of his house and he's pointing things out you know oh, oh, bloody hell the roof's gone off that and that's where my shed used to be oh look there's there's something in the pool and that's where the bar used to be and it's all very sedate and calm and relaxing and he turns a corner and i just hear this pregnant pause followed by oh bloody avo tree's gone and he was devastated about the tree not the, the building or the pool <laughs> yeah lovely fellow uh, they um that was a pretty devastating cyclone um it wiped out entire villages on santo um it wiped out coral keys resort which is was a very very popular dive resort um the dive center is still operational they pick up from other resorts um but of course a lot of these um places have been it's taking them a long time to rebuild um, because yeah. they can't get parts shipped in um they've got the labor force <laughs> but they it's it's been impossible with COVID to to get parts shipped in. Um, yeah, sure. They we we are in um, reasonably um, 
good contact with a couple of the dive resorts in Santo, which is, um, you know, the Coolidge and um, the Tucker and, you know, other um, dives like that. And they're still um, operational. At the moment, they're, um, you know, they've got a small um, business with ex- the expat market out of um, Port Villa. So um, they're all still open and they're just waiting for us to be able to come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have, have you dived in Vanuatu, Matt? I've not, no. See, all the South Pacific areas, I've, I've not done any of them yet. Um, the closest I've got was, you know, spending the year in Papua New Guinea. Oh, well, that's pretty good diving. Yeah, um, I can't complain at that. Yeah. <laughs> so Vanuatu is, there's, there's, there's three main um, diving regions. Um, the, mm-hmm. the most famous, of course, is in Santo for the Coolidge and Million Dollar Point. And um, there's also some um, lovely um, hard coral dives there as well. Um, so, sorry, just to back it up, one Million Dollar Point, is that is that one of the dumping grounds yes. in World War II or something like that? Yeah, so Million Dollar Point, um, this, this is just a horror story in waste. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, at the end of the war, um, the Americans had millions of dollars worth of equipment and they tried to sell it. At the time, Vanuatu was the New Hebrides. It was um, uh, managed by both um, Britain and France and um, they tried to sell their equipment to uh, the French and the French could see that they were just going to leave it there anyway, so they thought, well, <laughs> we'll just take it. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, the Americans weren't having any of that, so rather than let the French have it for free, they bulldozed it all off the end of the jetty and then for good measure blew up the jetty. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. Kind of like a dog oh, in a major. Well, at least it gives a good dive location. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's just incredible to see the amount of equipment that you know they just dumped. <laughs> yeah. That's a very common trend, though, isn't it? Especially from the American side when it comes to wars. Yeah, they well, a few now where they just leave the stuff. And go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, all through the Pacific, and you know, places like the Solomons and Palau and Truk. Um, yeah, yeah it's all just still there. <laughs> So um, just finishing up on Vanuatu, so mm. Port Villa is on the island of Efate. That's where the, that Port Villa is the capital. There's beautiful coral diving around there and some spectacular, um, a spectacular cavern called the Cathedral, um, so-called mm. because of its shape. And um, there's a really, really beautiful wreck there called the Semeli Federison. It's an old trader and it's in about 35 to um, 50 meters, but incredibly blue, clear water. And this wreck is covered in these amazing, um, vibrant, colorful fans and soft corals. It's a beautiful wreck. Does and it get then, much current going through there then? So. Um, I haven't experienced much current there. It's sort of inside the bay, but just inside the bay, so it's very clear. Um, water but um, and then further south in Vanuatu the island of Tanna um, more famous for its volcano um, an active volcano but there the fringing reef as well as full of blue holes and blue caves it's just yeah very very pretty reef diving nice it's another one to the bucket Mm, it really is it's beautiful oh what about um if we're finished with Vanuatu, what about over the water there? I see there's New Caledonia. Oh, New Caledonia, yeah. Um, one of the French territories, which um, gives it the benefit of being very well protected, um, the marine mm. re- reserve um, that surrounds New Caledonia is is enormous. And yeah. lots of pelagic action there off the island of um, off Namia. And 
it's it's famous for around November, December time. They have a grouper aggregation. Um, there's a similar one in French Polynesia, which you will have heard of. Um, mm-hmm. Not many people know that there is also a grouper aggregation in New, in New Caledonia. Mm-hmm. But basically it's just one of those amazing dives, normally through a channel, so it's a drift dive, and there are just thousands of them everywhere and and of course the reef sharks that come to feast on them as well but it's quite an incredible sight so lots of um pelagic action there um leopard sharks mantas um all sorts of rays reef sharks um so it's quite exciting diving and then off the island of the isle of pines uh that is just incredibly pretty pretty diving um there's a dive site there called the garden of eden and it's just absolutely stunning you know whip corals fans um lots of banded sea snakes in new caledonia yeah Yeah. um several different species but you see them everywhere um even snorkeling just off the beach so and The water is very, very clean and clear, um, even in the marina in Numia. Um, mm. I remember looking down off the jetty, waiting to get on the dive boat, and um, there's vibrant coral growing on <laughs> on the pylons, and a little banded sea snake came up to say hello. Well, he came up to yeah. have a breath of air. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've just never seen such clear water right in the middle of a marina. Yeah. It is. It is very rare nowadays, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Well, normally because they're dredged, I suppose. So, <laughs> mm, yeah, I don't know yeah. the history of New Year's Marina. Well, I think I seem to recall that New Caledonia is pretty pricey to get to and and dive. Is it not, or am I thinking of somewhere else? Uh, well, it's French, so <laughs> uh, um, the currency is French. <laughs> yeah. Um, but which can sometimes make it expensive in terms of exchange rate. I don't. It's not any more expensive to fly to than Vanuatu or Fiji. In fact, it's closer than both of them. Um, oh, yeah, of course, sure, yeah. But it just depends on where you choose to stay. Um, yeah. I, I would say it's probably on par with maybe Fiji, a little bit more expensive. Well, more expensive than Vanuatu and the Solomons, but those two destinations are very cheap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Solomons. We're not talking about the Solomons. Oh, yeah, Solomons. One of my favourite <laughs> places. <laughs> yet, yet another one. I've met so many people from the Solomons, but I've never had the opportunity to come dive. Oh, yet. no. And, yeah. And the, <laughs> the plan was to jump back on, on Taka at some point when she's in Solomons and, and experience it for myself. But, uh, alas, COVID kicked in, so that's been... Uh, dumped to the side for a while yeah well so where do we start with the solomons um well i can i can tell you um on the access front that um it looks like it's going to stay closed until mm. early part of next year yeah um that's all i know at the moment that's all i know it, um again they're one of the countries with a low vaccination rate, um, but we're, you know, dearly hoping that that picks up. Um, but, you know, at, like Vanuatu, they've already they've had a very low incidence of COVID there, I think maybe one or two. So yeah. um, hopefully that will mean that they, it's not too far off. Um, mm. So the, the diving there is everything, well, even – a lot more wrecks than Vanuatu, actually. Um, mm. Some of them as easy to access as the Coolidge, just off the beach in Guadalcanal, um, which is um, there are three main sites that are about a two-hour drive from Honiara, the capital. Um, mm. A plane wreck, a couple of Japanese transports, and a submarine. And um, they're all shore dives. And, um, you know, it, it's like most wrecks in the tropic. They're covered in coral, soft and hard corals. They've all got, you know, quite a bit of life around them. Um, the access point for most of them is, well, shallow, but they drop down quite quickly. 
Um, from there, um, the liverboard experience in the Solomons is fantastic because it takes you to places in the Russell and Florida islands that are, um, you know, not really visited by many people at all. And yeah. um, beautiful diving, beautiful reefs, lots of marine life, um, lots of beautiful caverns. Um, the LaRue Cut is probably one that you've seen that is a very long, skinny uh, cavern um, yeah. with beautiful lighting. Um, photographer's dream. <laughs> um, there's, yeah. a, there's another couple that open up into the jungle um, there on the Russell Islands that are just stunning. Um, lots of wrecks scattered everywhere. Um, you will have heard of Iron Bottom Sound, of course. Um, a lot of these wrecks are completely inaccessible. They're so deep, but then there's some like the Aran Wards that lie at about 70 metres that are very popular with technical divers. Yeah. Um, over in the Western Province, places like Munda, Gizo and Yupi, um, again, just absolutely stunning diving, and um, and the odd wreck. There's a few very shallow plane wrecks and um, transport wrecks in Gizo and Munda um, that are very interesting. Some you can snorkel. They're so shallow, like, you know, between seven or eight um, metres deep. And um, uh, then larger ones like the, um, the Toa Maru in... Giza. And then over in UP, just absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful coral reefs and uh, a wonderful uh, drift snorkel right, you know, right outside the resort where you can see yeah. um, reef sharks. I'll just give a shout out to um, my man. Alex Whitley Wilson over at Master Level Boards. He's just came, he came up with a load of information for me on how um, entry is going on with the various countries around the world at the moment. And Indonesia, um, he's he's put it in capital letters. Big news! There's a Paquette style sandbox program mm. that starts or started on first of October in Bali. Yeah, and they're opening up more and more to travel in Bali. And the other islands are being benchmarked to be part of this as well. So that's good news. That is good news. Um, yeah, they, they had a failed start in um, Bali last year, but now I think they've really got their act together. I yeah. attended a Ministry of Tourism webinar last week to find out all about it, which was very long. Um, oh, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I really, really can't wait for Bali um, to be accessible. Again, it is um, it is one of my favourite destinations. I know it, it, it seems to have sometimes get a bad rep for over-tourism, but for divers, um, the places that you visit in Bali, you know, are, are not the ugly Australian. Are we talking like over on the East Coast where um, beautiful muck diving as well, beautiful reefs, mm-hmm. um, up to places like Ahmed um, in the northeast and round to um, Njangan, which just has um, beautiful coral walls. And then, of course, Nusa Penida yeah, oh, and Nusa Lembongan. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I, at every opportunity I get when I'm doing an expedition down this side of the world, if there's an opportunity to find a location for guests to meet, I use Bali because yeah. it's so convenient and it's a great hopping point. It is. And yeah. generally there's always a few that want to do an extra couple of days. So we, we tend to land in Bali and just stop overnight in Bali and then hop on the boat and pop over to see Jace in Nusa Bonita and spend a couple of days diving there. It's a fantastic location to hop onto and it is. go through it especially for those that are traveling a long distance like america or canada well yeah and if you haven't yet i think everyone should experience the um the liberty up in tulamban that is oh, yeah. just a stunning stunning wreck dive and yeah. um so 
accessible and shallow. Um, I've dived it five times in a day. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just same, yeah. you keep going back <laughs> and you keep finding something new. Um, and, and, of course, the diving <laughs> is so cheap there too. <laughs> I tell you what amazes me about doing that wreck dive is that it's a shore dive. It's literally just in the water and you've got your dive guide or, you know, if you're going with your dive buddy, but there's always the ladies there that are going to carry your tanks. Mm. And it, it's when I first experienced it, I, I just wanted to help them because it's these tiny little ladies that are picking up a tank, mm. sticking it on the head and then walking over the the pebbles and the rocks and whatnot to get it down to your, your, your set up. Mm. It's a fantastic experience. I absolutely love it. They are. I, I wonder if, I wonder if Bali are going to be ready for the, for the masses that are going to rock up from Australia to Bali as soon as the uh, starting gates are open. Oh, well, let's hope so. Goodness, we're not even ready here. I mean, I'm trying mm. to book a restaurant for dinner <laughs> and <laughs> being told, um, we, you know, we can't get the staff. So, yeah, yeah um, I've got a feeling that, you know, the staff might not be an issue for places like Bali so much as much as it is here in Sydney. Um, yeah. So hopefully they'll be able to... Um, you know, gear up for us very soon. Yeah, um, yeah. I know everyone's eager for everyone to arrive, aren't they? Boredom and lack of income. Yeah. Well, and some, you know, going back to things like seaweed farming and fishing and you just got to hope that while there's no income there, um, they're still looking after the marine environment as, you know, as much as they have been over the recent mm. years. Um, so... Where to next from Bali in Indonesia? Where would you hop to next? Well, I always do, like I say, I always do Nusa Penida. And I've got, I, every time I, I get the opportunity, I'll give them a shout out because it, I think it's just a fantastic island. Mm. And for those people that don't know the islands just off Bali, there's there's three islands in a string. And um, you may have uh, heard of Lembongan um, more commonly, uh, where there's a lot of dive centers. Well, Nusa Penida is the, well, until covid hit in was the uh the one that was getting all the attention and a lot of businesses starting to set up and more dive centers etc um i i see it as a a bit of a gold mine and a, and a bit of a mecca for for divers because it's just a, such a relaxing place to be mm. and all of the dive sites that you visit from lembongan are around nusa Penida. so it's hop on a boat 10 minutes ride and you're at your dive site fantastic yes and famous well lumbong and famous also as well for um mola mola indeed yes yeah. one of the um a <laughs> few places in the world where there's um reliable regular sightings of mm. the weirdest looking fish in the world i <laughs> know oh, right yeah they were my nemesis for years and i managed to get them <laughs> Uh, just before COVID, actually. Yeah. Oh, lucky it, you. It was 2019. Yeah. Unfortunately, the it's one of those places as well, because there's three emerging currents. Um, you can get anything rock up. Mm. And the the sighting of a great white shark um, was on the day that we were flying out to Nusa Penida for that trip. So we were one day too late. To see this, uh, they this always turn. say that wherever you go. And, oh, uh, if only you were here yesterday. <laughs> well, I was getting the I was getting the photos from Jace direct. I'm getting <laughs> London in the airport. Look at what you've missed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's a fantastic place. I love it. And then going further afield, obviously we've got uh, we move into Komodo, mm. which if anyone's listening to this uh, podcast, it's all about diving. Komodo has definitely got to be on everybody's lists. I love it. It is, yeah. I mean, being at the, well, Indonesia, Komodo, Raja Ampat, and all of those islands in between being really at the, the centre of the Coral Triangle, um, mm. there's greater marine biodiversity there than anywhere else in the world. It's mm. it's just absolutely stunning. And Komodo, of course, um, famous for mantas, but just an abundance of marine life. Um quite exciting diving in Komodo. There can often be strong currents. Um, yeah. So not really for beginners, but um, did you, that exciting. Did you, manage, 
Sorry, did you manage? Have you managed to do the shotgun? Have you had a chance of doing that dive side? No, I haven't done the shotgun. Oh, it's great! Tell us about it. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Well, you drop in at the at one end, and um, you know, nice and sedate over a little bit of uh, sand and whatnot, and then you get into the funnel, and it just picks up, and it is awesome. It's like an underwater roller coaster while you're chilling out. <laughs> um, you just got to keep you got to keep one eye on the the dive guide at the front though because when you see him they put it in the brief as well when you get towards the end and he starts kicking you've got to kick to get closer to the coral because you're going to go out to come out of the out of the uh the, the current so you don't get washed out away from <laughs> the location you want to stay at so it's, it's bloody good fun well, but again like you say it's not a it's not a novice dive site no no um you've got to be able to um <coughs> You know, no, know how to dive in currents to be there. And, but there's lots yes. of exciting current diving around the Pacific, places like Palau as well. Um, Oolong Channel is a bit like that. Where, But that one, it spits you out inside the lagoon, so um, <laughs> it's it's fairly safe. Um, you can just fly along basically yeah. and watch all of the creatures below you. Um, there's a few channels like that in New Caledonia as well, and, of mm-hmm. course, um, uh, Rolly Shoals is very famous for its um, very high-speed drift diving as well. <laughs> yeah. Have you been there yet? Rolly Shoals. I was supposed to go there last year, in fact. <laughs> 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 but that got scuppered. <laughs> yeah. I've got a couple of mates that they've been two or three times now, I think. They absolutely love it. Yeah. But it's a, it's a very short window of opportunity to get there, though, isn't it? Rolly Shoals, yeah. It's it's diveable three months of the year, but because most of the, well, the few liverboards that go there spend most of the year um, doing Kimberley Coast cruises, and there's obviously a much bigger market for that. And yeah. um, and so they tend to only do a couple of months um, out at Rolly Shoals. So, yeah, I think there's maybe three boats in total that do eight trips a year each. Mm. So it's booked out at the moment until 2023. Mm. So it's, yeah, very. I think even, even before COVID it was always getting booked up. Oh, yeah. Way, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, well, on the Palau front, hmm. um, I'm just referring back to Alex's notes here as well, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but at the moment there's only uh, flights going into Palau via Taiwan or Guam, and hmm. the other bit of a pain in the backside is that you need a, you need a COVID test uh, 72 hours before arrival and then again on day five. So if you're on a liverboard that's six, seven, eight days long, the yes. boat actually has to come back to port so that you can get another COVID test before you can carry on with you. Well, trip. you don't have to be on a liverboard to experience the best of Palau. So mm. um, if those guys um, – and I should say as well, Taiwan and Guam, it's, it, that's normally the only way to get in there. Taiwan mm-hmm. is usually um, easier for Aussies to get to Palau through that route with Guam being easier for um, North Americans. Um, Even though you're going further north to come back down south again, it's the most direct route, um, you know, without stopping about three times. But, um, but yeah, it's, you know, the the best of Palau, like German Channel, um, uh, Oolong Channel, Blue Point, Blue Hole, they're all accessible by day boat. Um, they're not too far from um, uh, the capital, Karor, and there's a number of very nice hotels there, um, much cheaper to do it that way than a liverboard. Yeah. And, um, you know, there is a couple of very good dive operators over there, um, well, one of whom also manages um, uh, the liverboard. Um, but Mm -hmm. one of the liverboards but yeah you can certainly just base yourself in Karor and go out for um, day trips um, 
well, you could probably do three or four dives a day if you wanted to. Um, yeah. and because they're, they're really not that far, far out. That's it for this episode, folks. Join Deb and Matt for part two later this week. In the meantime, if you're looking to plan your next dive adventure, then why not get in touch with Deb via the Dive Planet website and use the reference code SCUBAGOAT1020 to receive a 5% discount on international travel, excluding airfares, of course, or a $100 travel voucher towards your next dive trip. Terms and conditions apply. That code, once again, SCUBAGOAT1020. Happy travels and part two coming soon. This is Scuba Goat Under the Sea, the podcast for the inquisitive diver.